Here it is. The... What month is it? March? Oh my gosh, it's March. <laughs> well, this is the March palette full packs box. We're gonna open it up, find out what's inside, and then I'll try and create an illustration using its contents. <gasps> Woo, let's do it. <laughs> Ooh, these metallic, shiny. So first thing in the box that I see are these Yasutomo pearlescent watercolors. And they come in this really lightweight plastic palette. See the pearlescentness. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Okay, these are cool. So these are four by six watercolor postcards. So you could send them in the mail. I've actually received one of these before. Oh, look! We have the little postcard doodly doo on the other side. And then you can still send them in the mail. That'd be so fun. Ooh. Okay, in here, a sketchbook. There's a pencil stuck in my sketchbook. It's a Derwent blue gray watercolor pencil. So this is a watercolor sketchbook or visual journal by Strathmore. It's 44 pages with cold pressed watercolor. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. So shiny. Okay, so it's got like this brown crocodile pad. Oh, that's thick. And then you have your watercolor paper. Let's see what else is in here. There's this Koi watercolor pocket field sketchbook. I think I actually got one of these in a scrawler box a year ago or more, <laughs> and I gave it to my cousin. So I have used this guy before. Yeah, he's still cute. I don't remember them being numbered. Maybe they were. But you got your paints on the little left. You've got a mixing palette on the lid. You got a little sponge. And then you have this little tiny guy that's a foldable paintbrush. So if you take this out, the water can fall out, but you can also connect it here. And you've got a little to-go watercolor brush that can hold all your water. And then when you want to go, you just unscrew it. Grab your little lid. Get in there. And then you can pack on up. Hopefully that won't be too wet. Stick that in a bag and you're off to a new location. Let's see if there's anything else in here. That looks like it's it. I can pick up this card. What the heck? And this just lists all of the art supplies with their retail prices. Oh, I just, okay, wait, let me try something. So it says, let's see, you open this up. Oh wait, maybe you can't. So I was just reading through the description of all the items and the Koi watercolor pocket field sketchbook set description does not match this palette. Specifically, it says you can use this as an easel, which you can tell it's, Pretty loosey-goosey. <laughs> you could do it like this. I mean, if you're holding it like a Game Boy and then... <laughs> and I did get an email from the owner of Powerful saying that there was a typo about this. So I'm gonna guess that this description is that typo. <laughs> Usually my biggest issue with watercolor pencils is you can still see like the texture of the lines that you drew. So how well that like cleans up is a big marker for whether I like them or not. Ooh, that's a pretty color. <laughs> I feel like the older the ge I get, the more I like yellows and oranges. <laughs> I'm excited to see what this color looks like. <gasps> Ooh, yeah. Actually, I changed my mind. I think I like every color now. I am really not picky about colors anymore. <laughs> it's hard to have a favorite color when every color has its own vibe. And I just like every color makes you feel a little different. And I just love all the colors, okay? <laughs> So those are the Koi watercolor set right there. Now I want to try the pearlescent ones. Let's see what happens, so maroon kind of color. Okay, they're a little bit more transparent than I was expecting, but now that I'm saying that word out loud, I feel like it said transparent on the packaging. No, it didn't. Actually, that was the Koi. <laughs> the Koi says fine quality transparent watercolor. Maybe they'll dry a little bit more opaque. Let's keep going. Might be one of those ones where you gotta like kind of let water sit. Six colors in and I'm definitely noticing certain ones are just working a little better. There we go. That's all of the pearlescent colors. I want to see if they are a little bit more vibrant with a darker backdrop. So yeah, now I'll just let that dry and then we can test out the pearlescent color on the black. 
So I'm going to take one of these lighter colors and draw on top and see. Eh, they're not super opaque. Ooh. It's kind of fun. Like, they don't feel like normal watercolors. They're definitely more pasty. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of consistency because, like, some seem more transparent than others. But I don't know if that's the way I'm using them or if that's just the way the pigment crumbles. <laughs> I have a couple different ideas, but I definitely want to do it on these postcards. All right, so the pencil that they provided is a watercolor pencil, which means it reacts to water like we tested over here. So I don't want to sketch with that. Otherwise the lines are going to start blending in with the colors. And if I want like a vibrant yellow, that's not going to work with this blue pencil. So I am going to just sketch, use this really old Crayola pink especially for just getting the layout on this uh, postcard here. Right, there's just a sketch. <laughs> I think I'm gonna end up doing a lot of these because this doesn't really fit the vibe I was going for, but I do want to practice using these paints. So let's grab a couple paint brushes. Start by mixing a couple colors here. I always like to start really light and then build up with my watercolors. At least I try to, I always <laughs> end up going too dark. I'm gonna try something different with the hair. Instead of doing a flat wash, try to add some weird water flowing texture by using too much water. Let's see what happens with that. <laughs> Oh shoot, I mixed the blue with the red. Ah, no, it's muddy. No, I just don't know how to watercolor, guys. I try, I swear. <laughs> I don't mean for it to look this way. I'm try just going over this with the pencil and see what happens. So I don't like anything about that one. <laughs> Let's try again. I'm gonna try something completely different. You know what? <laughs> Let's try blotching down some colors and trying to create something because <laughs> I'm feeling a little art blocky. So I think I just need to experiment and try something crazy. Look at my blue jays. <laughs> I should be doing this in the sketchbook. Yeah, I don't know why I did this on the postcard. I was not thinking. My brain was turned off. Yeah, why don't I move over to the sketchbook if I'm just gonna play around with these? Watercolor is just not my, I don't know. I keep trying and I just keep failing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've been at this for a couple hours now and I'm, I'm not getting anywhere, I think. I don't know, I think I'm just, I don't know, too, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is, I'm just not feeling too inspired. But I'm just gonna go ahead and just sketch some things here and try and spark some interest. <laughs> cause, cause I know for sure something isn't working. <laughs> I've also noticed like when I'm trying too many new things at once, I'll get really overwhelmed. So I'm gonna try and go back to my comfort zone here. Oh, it would be kind of cool if I just use like fluffy colors. Try and draw a skirt, maybe. Let's just try something here. I'm gonna put down a bunch of water first. Kind of fill in where I'd like the paint to go. And hopefully that makes it look kind of soft and fluffy. I think I used too much water. All right, so this next little bit's gonna be narrated by me from the future. Hi, nice to meet ya. <laughs> so what was happening here was my 128 gig SD card filled up. <laughs> so, and while that was transferring on the computer, I did have this other camera. So I decided to just film a sketch. And uh, this actually ended up being my favorite sketch of the day. So I'm glad that I did. But I didn't really talk through this because I don't know, there was, there was a little monster festering inside me and it was not in a good mood. But basically my thought process for this was, you know what, I don't care what anyone else cares about my art right now. I'm just gonna draw what I want to draw. And if that's just a random girl floating there without legs, then that's what it's gonna be. 
And I think one of the reasons the sketch turned out was so good was because <laughs> I didn't get a good angle of it and I wasn't like properly recording it because I definitely fight with myself on the inside. Like I have an inner monologue with what I want, what I think other people want, what I think other people think I should be trying to do. <laughs> but it definitely does impact the way I draw and it's definitely worse when I'm like doing art block because Art block for me is just insecurity in your art, which happens all the time. It's just in varying degrees. And art block is like when your insecurity reaches like a very high point where it feels like it's impacting you. Yeah, I think I talk a little bit more about art block in the next clip. So let's go to that. Okay. <laughs> I just decided to like sketch, you know, without the camera on. And I came up with this. And I think I was just having a little bit of like uh, anxiety, camera anxiety because I actually really like this. Like it was, it's very guilty pleasure and fun. I did have this camera going. Hopefully it was in focus and we have a few shots of it. I think it'd be fun to um, just add some color to this pencil sketch. I do want to try and limit my color palette. I kind of want to use this pearlescent color for the hair. I just think that would work really well and maybe use this for shading if need be. So these two, which happen to be my two favorite colors on this palette. So I'm going to go in, try not to use too much water because this paper can't hold that too well. Start adding in some of that and hope we don't pick up too much pencil and just slowly add some color here. It's a really pretty color. I like it. It's uh, copper and then you can see the shimmer. <laughs> when I was younger and I had get art block, I'd kind of give up on art for like <laughs> months, like seriously. And when I was in like an art block stage, I could never get myself to draw anything because everything would always just turn out so bad in my mind. The thing is, now that I'm older, those moments still happen where it feels like everything I'm drawing is turning out bad. But because because I'm kind of in this interesting scenario where I've given myself deadlines to get certain drawings done, and mainly that's from YouTube. So this has been happening for like five years now. When I do get into an art block, I have to find a way out of it. And sometimes when you feel that art block, it means you just need to take a break. But like I was saying, I'm kind of in a scenario where I don't really have that ability because of a deadline I've set on myself. And if you ever end up with a job in art, you're gonna have deadlines set by other people and you're gonna have to meet them even if you feel like, you know, you're producing poop. <laughs> I really like how shiny this is. Ooh. <laughs> and so I guess what I'm saying is just because you've drawn three bad pictures in a row doesn't mean the fourth one's gonna be bad. Or just because you draw four bad pictures in a row doesn't mean the fifth picture's gonna be bad. Sometimes you just need to change up your scenario, maybe sit in your chair backwards or something <laughs> and get out of that mindset that you can't draw because art can have a bit of some uh, mental gymnastics involved. I think I want the shirt to be white. So we're gonna leave that plain, but I wanted to give her like that cute like shirt you see on Instagram all the time with the, stripes maybe a red stretch i should probably use a smaller brush for this you know what? i might just limit the color palette even more just do both stripes in red and then i'll make the shorts red the shorts were going to be light blue for some reason i grabbed red for the, the stripe <laughs> add a light red so it's almost pink maybe even mix in a little of this pearlescent copper color I'm not sure if I finished talking about art block and I don't remember what I said, but to summarize it, I think what's important to know is art block is a lot in your head. And sometimes you do need to take a break, which is fine if that'll help your brain recover <laughs> from the trauma of drawing bad drawings. I think the best way to get over art block is just remembering that you can draw. And sometimes it comes down to like going back to your guilty pleasure kind of art, like this stuff. <laughs> And if you're having trouble, I believe in you. <laughs> I was so frustrated today, but I'm so much happier now that I, I persevered and I, I got something that, I don't know, I find fun to draw. Since I've used some darker colors, I'm gonna go with a light skin. I'm gonna darken this up. I don't like how pastel it is. I kinda wanna try and match that color, but now this looks too dark, so whoops. I kind of want to work on the face a little bit more with the pencil. I just noticed some uh, goofy bits. 
But I can color in the legs before I get there. Start with a little bit reddish near the knees. Then add a little water. Dilute the color as I go higher up. Color in this arm too. I just realized I haven't colored yet. Oh, don't want to color the face. I almost colored the face. I'm like, no, I need to erase that. I also really like just playing with different styles. So sometimes I like it to be big eyed and squishy. And sometimes I like it to look a little bit more realistic, which I think is also why I kind of tried to split my art style into two. And that was working for a while. So maybe I need to be more like that. I gotta, I don't know. I just gotta make some decisions with my life. <laughs> I'm having an art crisis. <laughs> Try and blend out this harsh blush color. I had someone ask the other day, why do you always draw their noses like really dark red? I'm like, I don't know. It's just, I, I just feel compelled to do it, you know? It's just, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of the blushies. And if you've ever been outside and it's freezing cold, negative 10, and then you, you, you come back in and you're like, have to go to the bathroom and you happen to walk by a mirror and you catch a glimpse and you're like, dang, I look cute. And then you realize why it's because your nose is red. That's why. <laughs> That's why I like drawing red nosies, even though she's obviously out in the summer here, but uh, maybe she's got a little sunburn. You can kind of get the same effect. If you've ever burnt your nose, <laughs> same thing. It just hurts more. Maybe we just need to do some lips. And then I need to try and figure out how to finalize this drawing. See if there's anything else I want to do. Doodly doo de doo. That probably will work. Now, what color do I want? Do I want to go with an opposing color or fit with this red brown color scheme? Ooh, I don't know. What do I want to do? I could try going pearlescent up to this red color. So, like, start with this red cap. Oops, I had that on my brush. What was I thinking? Okay. Maybe try to blend up to an even lighter red, pink, I don't know, <laughs> color up at the top. I wonder if I could make like shapes in the metallic. Okay, I messed that up a bit. <laughs> well, I'll try with that. But <laughs> I do want to just go in, even though they didn't include this, go in with a white gel pen. Actually, I could try this Prismacolor with this white pencil. Let me just try and outline some stuff here and because I went a little too dark with the background color as I do <laughs> I just need to make the character stand out a bit. And if this doesn't work I can always use a white gel pen. Now we try the plan B. Let's clean up some of these daisies. Now I don't know if this is a fact but from what I've seen watching other people who know what they're doing, I believe <laughs> that the mark of like good watercolor paper is whether or not you can like l do multiple layers without lifting or having any of this happening. Do you see how you can see the paper? And that makes it just look gross. <laughs> I'm no expert, but I want to avoid that. How do I avoid that? I think I liked it better as a sketch, but I like all my drawings better as a sketch, so that's nothing new. <laughs> you can see the hair, how it shines compared to the rest of the watercolors. That's really cool. And I think it'd be fun not to just use those in a full drawing, but use them as accents. I don't have anything bad to say about these, except that I don't know how to use them. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for sticking with me on my uh, art journey <laughs> as I opened up this powerful packs blog and struggle to find confidence in my art. <laughs> we all go through the ups and downs, it's fine. I'll get there eventually. I just, I'm really frustrated with what I've been making lately and I feel like I've been producing poopy art, but I think it's important to share it anyway, even though it makes me cringe a little because not everyone has a perfect year, not everyone has a perfect day, not everyone has a perfect week of art. So if you're struggling, I'm there with you. <laughs> we all struggle. Oh, what do you think? Shimmer, shimmer, shimmer. <laughs> I do want to thank Palpful Packs for sending me this. Um, this is their premiere packs. They also have a petite and a young artist pack. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check out their website and see what that's all about. And if you're producing art that you're not really crazy about the way it looks, I hope you can at least try to enjoy the process. Um, I do want to thank you guys for watching and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.